Hi everyone, I am Coach Sierra. I am the Research and Assessment Specialist with Academic Coaching for World Changers. Welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about research terms. All right, so when you think of a research term, what comes to mind? Pause the video if you need to. Hopefully some research terms that come to mind are qualitative, quantitative, independent variable, dependent variable, things of that nature. But before we can even go to what is a research term, we need to break down what exactly is research. So research is the systematic investigation or study to discover new knowledge, answer questions, or solve problems. But we're doing it in a way that is systematic. So there is a procedure and process that we follow. For example, conducting surveys to understand consumer preferences in the smartphone market. So that would be a systematic investigation. We might do a randomized control trial, a correlation, re correlation research, qualitative research, quantitative research, but whatever that method is, it's going to be a systematic investigation, either to discover new knowledge, answer questions, or solve a problem. All right, so with that being said, what is a research question? Research questions are specific inquiries that guide the focus of a research study. They articulate what the researcher aims to investigate, explore, or understand. So the purpose, research questions provide clarity and direction to the study, helping researchers define the scope of their work and establish a foundation for data collection and analysis. So that's the difference so far between research and a research question. It's a specific question in hopes to guide the focus of the study. All right, so what are, what are some characteristics of good research questions? They should be clear and focused. They should be answerable. They should be relevant and they should be feasible. All right, so clear and focused, it means they should be concise and unambiguous, meaning not vague, addressing a specific aspect of the research topic. Research questions should be formulated in a way that allows them to be answered through empirical, which means research, or data analysis. Through empirical, so through like a, a research lens, so using that formalized, systemized research or data analysis. And relevant, they should align with the research objectives and contribute to existing knowledge as well as should be practical and manageable within available resources and time, right? So this is why we have sample sizes, because we cannot survey everyone in the population. We just don't have the time or the money to do so. So that's feasibility. All right, next term, a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a testable statement or prediction about the relationship between the variables in a study. If you see me for individual sessions, you would know that the first thing we do in research is to look at a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis states that there is no relationship or no difference in the variables we are studying. The other option is to look at a alternative hypothesis. But usually for research, about 95% of the time, we start off with a null hypothesis. So this example here, hypothesizing that increase that increased exercise leads to improved mental health would not be considered a null hypothesis because it's giving some sort of direction. This would be considered a alternative hypothesis. All right, so here are some other examples of good research questions, right? Now that we know, to, know what a hypothesis is. What is the impact of social media usage on mental health of adolescents? How does employee motivation affect job performance in the healthcare industry? What are the factors influencing consumer preferences for sustainable fashion? How does access to quality education contribute to reducing some inequality in urban areas? Now, if we were looking at a null hypothesis, of course, we our hypothesis would be or we would state that there is no relationship in the variables we are observing. So that first question, what is the impact of social media usage on mental health of adolescents? Our null hypothesis would say, would say there would be no relationship or no difference between social media usage and the mental health of adolescents, and then so on and so forth. 
All right, so what is a variable? We've talked about this before in my individual sessions. What is a variable? A measurable factor or characteristic that can change or vary in a research study. For example, in a study about academic performance, variables could include study time, sleep, and test scores. Now, pop quiz question. What is the dependent variable? And what is the e independent variable or independent variables? Feel free to pause the video if you don't know. The dependent variable is the academic performance. That's what we are measuring. The study time, sleep, and test scores are independent variables. They could impact the dependent variable. But we know if we're looking at a correlation study that those variables or those relationships are not proving cause and effect. Correlation research does not prove cause and effect. All right, next we have a control group. Control group is a group in an experiment that is not exposed to the treatment or the independent variable. It is used as a baseline for comparison. So the control group is a group that receives the placebo or the group that receives nothing, right? They're in the control group. The other group would be called the experimental group or the treatment group. That would be the group that receives the treatment or the experiment. The placebo, again, goes to the control group. Quantitative research. Quantitative research is research that collects and analyzes numerical data to answer research questions. For example, surveys with rating scales to measure customer satisfaction. A rating scale would be considered quantitative data because how are you collecting that data? You're getting it from numbers. Versus qualitative data, you'd be getting from open-ended responses or open-ended questions. Sometimes in my independent sessions, I say qua la 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 So you think of someone singing or talking, giving their lived experience. Know that lived experience is also called phenomena. All right, so qualitative research, by definition on the screen, it says research that explores and describes non-numerical data, often involving interviews, observations, and open-ended questions or phenomena, which is lived experiences. For example, conducting in-depth interviews to understand the experiences of cancer survivors. Next, we have a literature review. A literature review is a critical evaluation of existing research and literature related to the research topic. This step happens after you formed a question, but before you conduct your null hypothesis. So great, you have a question you wanna answer, but what is that existing literature, or what, what is already existing on that topic? What is the existing literature? You cannot answer a question with information that already exists, if that makes sense. Like you can't start a new study by already addressing something that someone's already addressed. That's plagiarizing. So you would need to be able to check first to see if there's any existing literature. Then your question might change or it might be formed differently. You might see that this information already exists in the state of Tennessee, but not for the state of Georgia, so on and so forth. An example of a literature review would be reviewing academic articles on climate change to understand current knowledge and gaps then that would form your instrument and so on and so forth for research. Your instrument, by the way, is a term that we use to say the thing in which you want to use to collect your data. So is that through interview questions, survey questions, focus group questions, so on and so forth. All right, next we have a sample. A sample is a subset of a population. So when you take a sample of something, you take a sample of a cookie or a sample of a chocolate bar, you're taking just a small bit of the larger portion. So in this case, a sample is a subset of the population selected for research purposes. For example, surveying 500 out of 10,000 employees in a large corporation. Next, we have validity. Validity is the extent to which a research study measures what it claims to measure. So for example, ensuring that a test accurately measures mass skills, if that is, an, that 
is its intended outcome. A lot of tongue twisters today, everyone. So validity is, are you measuring what you are supposed to be measuring? Remember, there are two types of validity we need to know for this exam. One of them is internal validity, which is this definition. When you think of, am I measuring what I'm supposed to be measuring? That's really internal validity. The other term is external validity. External validity is the generalizability of the results. How generalizable are your results? We definitely need to have internal validity, but we do not always need to have external validity, especially if we're doing something called a purposeful sample. A purposeful sample is a type of sampling method where you specifically select one group of people to look at, a specific group, knowing you will not have a high amount of generalizability, also called external validity. Next, we have reliability. Reliability is the consistency or stability of research measurements or results over time. So for example, a scale that measures, a scale that consistently measures weight accurately is an example. So we're looking here at the consistency of it. We know that consistency doesn't always lead to accuracy, right? So be careful with this definition. You're like, then why did you include it, Coach Sierra? Because I want you to know, I want you to be aware that something can be consistent, but not always accurate. It can be accurate and consistent, but just because it's consistent doesn't mean it's always accurate. So this is an example of where the scale is also showing um, accuracy, but that is not always the case, especially if the scale is broken, for example. All right. So ethical considerations. Did you know that ethics and research have a crossover? So this is introducing the language of the IRB, the Institutional Review Board. This is the board that reviews research. So ethical considerations essentially are moral principles and guidelines that govern research involving human subjects, animals, or sensitive data. For example, obtaining informed consent from participants and protecting their privacy their privacy. That would be an example of having and upholding ethical considerations. The board that is in charge of making sure you uphold ethical considerations as a researcher is the IRB, the Institutional Review Board. Data analysis. Some people might say data analysis. This is the process of examining, cleaning, and interpreting research data to draw conclusions. So this could be using statistical software to analyze survey responses. So this is the official procedure of looking at your data. So this is why we need to know nominal ordinal interval ratio. Those are the categories or the levels of measurement for variables. If you don't know those, you need to know those. This is how we can clean up our data. So if we know it's nominal, it uses a chi-square test. We know if it's ordinal, then the variables are ordered and we need to make sure that this order is listed correctly in the database, so on and so forth for interval and ratio. This is not a lesson on nominal ordinal interval ratio. So if you need to know that, feel free to reach out and book an individual session and we can make sure you understand that information. It is also listed in the Helwig book, all right? Nominal ordinal interval ratio, that those are our levels of measurement or scales of measurement. All right, a conclusion. This is a part in the study that summarizes your research findings. This is also where you can find a type one or type two error in the conclusion. So whether or not to accept or reject the null hypothesis is a conclusion that researchers need to make. And if you make a mistake in that, you run the risk of committing a type one or type two error. So know that type one and type two error. All right, so if you have any questions like, what, what is a type one or type two error? What is nominal ordinal interval ratio? What's a control group again? What's an experimental group? If you have any of those questions, you can totally contact me, Sierra Turner at acfwc at gmail.com. Or of course, email drpam2020 at gmail.com to get on my calendar. We also have discounts if you didn't know that. So if you're interested in a discount coupon for a four week session, a 12 week se session, an NCE prep course, or a boot camp live or pre recorded, just let us know and we can get you those coupon codes. All right. Each coach has a coupon code. So if you let me know, I can give you my coupon code and you can apply it to your session and then get a discounted price on our services. Remember that we can help you pass your exam. You can help yourself pass your exam. We have free videos. We also have paid services and we're more than welcome to accommodate you, all right? So just let us know, reach out and I hope you have a very great day. 
Thank you for watching this video on research terms. Bye everyone.